I believe I'm supposed to speak this morning for a moment. Uh, we have seen a great light. I want you to turn to Matthew 4.16. Matthew 4.16. And the writer of Matthew says this, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region and the shadow of death, light has dawned. Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your plan. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you were obedient to that plan. That you left the glory and the dignity of heaven. And you humbled yourself and became a human being, a man. And Lord, that you did so and you completed the years that you were on this earth perfectly. And Father, that you died and that you defeated death and that you rose again. And you're seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for each of us. So, Lord, give us ears to hear. And Lord, give us eyes to see. Lord, that we would know you and honor you and thank you. And so this morning, we bless you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is identified as a great light, casting brightness among the people overcoming the shadow of death and Jesus corrects if you will he overcomes he counteracts the darkness of this world and how many of you know that his light shines today even as it did many thousands of years ago it's just as bright today guiding toward love and guiding toward life and so we celebrate that this morning the shepherds were the first ones to actually experience this light in this way. It says in Luke 2, verses 8 and 9, there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood up before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. At the announcement of Jesus, an angel of the Lord comes, and he stands before a group of shepherds. They didn't ask for this. They didn't anticipate this. This was a night like any other night. And all of a sudden, they had a God encounter. Have you ever had a God encounter? Have you ever had a time when it seemed like God just broke through? And all of a sudden, the confusion lifted. And the fog of your brain. How many of you have ever had foggy brain? Hallelujah for the honest ones in our midst here this morning. And, you know, we get in these times when we have these fogs and, and all of a sudden Jesus will break through and everything that was confused becomes clear. Just like Pastor Kent mentioned, you know, when, when you really get it, when you really get him, everything becomes clear, at least in that moment. And here was a bunch of shepherds. The angel comes, stands before them, and the Bible says the glory of the Lord it illuminates their surrounding. A great light had been revealed to the shepherds they were impressed they were so impressed they didn't know exactly what to do and the message that was given is a savior has been born a man has been born like no other one that was prophesied of from days of old from ancient times in the history and the oral traditions of the children of Israel had come and appeared and appeared at an angelic announcement a savior is born in the light of Jesus the glory of God shone forth and it caused the heavens to celebrate they had a party and it caused the shepherds to say wow what just happened what's really going on here and it caused them to seek out he said, they say, they say, let us go and see. There's an announcement of a Savior. We're up here in the hills above Jerusalem, above Bethlehem. We're going to go and we're going to see this that the angel has announced. It caused them to go and see. You know, sometimes this light, the light of Jesus brings that clarity, brings that brightness into our life. And the only thing that we can do is celebrate and stand in awe. Have you ever been in a situation, and maybe it was a part of a service where it was just like the presence of God was tangible, and you were just like, whoa, 
I, I don't want to leave here. But maybe it was when you were driving somewhere by yourself and you were on a road trip that was going to take you like four hours. And about the time that you get about an hour and 20 minutes in, I know these things because I do this stuff. Okay, an hour and 20 minutes in, it's like, okay, this is getting along. And so your thoughts turn to life. And your thoughts turn to the things that really begin to matter. And all of a sudden you realize that the Spirit of God is beginning to speak to you. You know it's not you. You couldn't come up with that, that much wisdom. And you know it's not you because, you know, normally your thoughts are kind of scattered in here. And all of a sudden God begins to speak to you. And you realize that the light of Jesus is flowing into your being. And the only thing you can do is say, you know, I didn't deserve this. I didn't anticipate this. I didn't think this, anything like this was going to happen. But all of a sudden you realize God spoke. And he spoke to you. Your Savior has come. The wise men were drawn to this light. It says in Matthew 2, 1 and 2, Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who was born the king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. At the birth of Jesus, a star appeared, a light shining in the heavens, a light celebrating a great light that had come, announcing the birth of a king. And it set the wise men on a journey to seek him probably about a two-year journey they were from way in the east somewhere they'd seen the light they were wise enough to know that something had happened and they were also honoring and respectful enough to know that you know what it is appropriate that we seek him out seek this king this savior out and worship him the Bible says that Herod during that time when the wise men arrived that he killed all the babies two years of age and under because that was about the time that the star had appeared. Jesus was probably, you know, we, we, we have the infants in the nativity scenes and we have the wise men on the one side, you know, and they're bringing their gifts, this box that's supposed to be gold and frankincense and myrrh, whatever, that's fine. But probably they didn't happen at the same time. I doubt if the shepherds showed up at the stable, or the, the wise men showed up at the stable. The wise men showed up when Jesus was somewhere between a year and a half and two years old. And they brought gifts because they had sought him out probably about a two-year journey. Do you realize that there's an aspect of Jesus, an aspect, if you will, of God that requires that you and I seek him out? Yes, he can come and he can break into our existence. But he says, I want you to come and I want you to seek me. The Bible says that for those that will seek him with all their heart, they will be found by him. But it takes a seeking. It takes a willingness to lay aside other pursuits and begin to seek the presence of God, to seek the face of God in relationship. It says that Jesus, that our relationship there is the most important relationship that you and I have. That is the priority. And many of us, so many of us make this life a priority and we seek out the things that make us happy, the things that bring somehow security and contentment. And yet the reality is this life is a very short period of time compared with eternity. This life is not anything other than a testing ground for what is to come. And as soon as we understand that, that this is not all there is, but this is simply a precursor to eternity. And how we conduct this life, the decisions that we make in this life, will determine what happens in the next forever. Do you have a concept of forever? Let me just tell you, it's a long time. These wise men sought him out. They said, we must go and worship. And many times the light of Jesus... He breaks in, but he causes us to seek him out. We're wise enough to know that something has happened, yet we lack the understanding of what truly has taken place. And it causes us to go deeper. It causes us to seek him out, to lay aside some of our pursuits in this life, to say, you know what? I'm going to lay aside what is temporal or what is temporary for what is eternal. And I'm going to seek out that which is eternal. Because we have this need, this void, if you will, to seek out the things of God. We're drawn to seek Jesus out, to find the one that we're compelled to worship, to know him, to really 
really know him, not just know about him, not just know him from a distance, not just know him because our fathers knew him or our mothers prayed for us, but know him in relationship because he is worthy of that relationship. A place of intimacy, place of communion. Simeon recognized this light. Luke 2, 30 to 32, Simeon says, My eyes have seen your salvation, God, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon was an old man, and he ministered in the temple, and the Holy Spirit had promised him prophetically, he said, You will see the Messiah born before you die. And Jesus' mother and father brought Jesus into the temple on the eighth day. That was what was supposed to happen. The baby was to be dedicated unto the Lord on the eighth day. They did that. And Simeon was there and he exclaimed and he said this, My eyes have seen your salvation. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles. That makes us involved in this passage because most of us here if not all of us are probably Gentiles we may have a number of Jewish believers here that's wonderful we welcome you we love you for most of us we're classified as Gentiles and yet God in his wisdom Jesus in his strength made a way for even us to come and to be known not only as God's people but as God's children his sons, his daughters. He is our father. We're his family. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Many of us in this room have seen this great light. The light of Jesus the Christ. We've experienced him breaking into our circumstances. How many of you can think back to a time in this year when you know that God moved? It may have been subtle. It may have been dramatic. But you know that God spoke. He did something. He brought something to pass. He ordered circumstances in a way that only really he could do. And you look back on that. Many times when we're in the midst of those kind of times, we don't realize it until we look back. We say, whoa, God, you must have been with me. And he was. Have you ever thanked God for the things that didn't happen? Thank you, Lord, that I didn't have that wreck that happened right in front of me. Thank you, Lord, that I didn't step in a hole and throw out my back. Whatever. I mean, you know, it can be small. It can be, but the, I believe that the Holy Spirit keeps us, protects us from things. And it's appropriate during this time to thank God for what hasn't happened, we recognize his light overshadowing us, compelling us to celebrate him, inviting us to come and to see. You see, we've been drawn by him. It wasn't him, it wasn't us that initiated this relationship, it was him. Even before you ever acknowledged him, and perhaps there are those here that really don't acknowledge him today, he's drawing you. He's asking you to come. Some of you have been in relationship with him in the past and you've drifted away. He's saying, come back. He's saying, I love you enough not to leave you where you are, but I have so much more planned for you, so much of a destiny that I've already prepared for you. He's drawing us. He's drawing you to simply walk into that destiny, to say yes to him this morning, inviting us just like the shepherds, just like the wise men, to come and to see that indeed he is worthy of it all. And we recognize this great light. He's our Savior. Not just the Savior. He's your Savior. He's my Savior. It's a personal salvation that he's drawn us into and he made available to us. Setting us on a journey of forgiveness, a journey of freedom, a journey of life. Yes, we recognize this great light. We recognize him. We honor him this morning. We worship him. In this process, 
He's put his light in us. Matthew 5, 14 says, you are the light of the world. He's a great light, but he's put his light within us. Place the light of Jesus through the Holy Spirit in each of us. Do you realize that you carry his presence? That you carry the presence of God, the very presence of the creator of the universe. Because you said yes to Jesus, he came and he lives in you. We carry his presence, we act in his wisdom. Have you ever heard something come out of your mouth that you wonder where it came from, but it was good? Not where it came from and it was negative and you wish you hadn't said it. I'm sure you've had that experience too. Somebody comes and they have a situation or a circumstance, they begin, and you, you just have the right word. And it's the right word at the right time, and you actually stopped talking when you should have. And it meant minister to the person. It's God. It's His light. It's His wisdom shining through you. We shine in His revelation. Because ultimately, life is revealed to that which He has brought life to. And that's you. And that's me. The Bible says that we're in the world. We're present geographically, if you will, in the world. But we're not of the world any longer. That we're different. And if you are really seeking the Lord Jesus, if you seek him out, it will place you in a situation that will be opposed, if you will. It will be at odds with people that are not seeking him. You will be different than others. And that's okay. When the world sees us, it should see his light first. It shouldn't see our own wisdom first. It shouldn't somehow see our attractiveness. It shouldn't somehow see our talent. All those things God can utilize. But you know what? When people see you and me, his light should be the first thing that they sense. His presence should go before us. His wisdom, his words, his revelation, his presence superimposed upon ours, shining forth as a light under this world. So let me ask you a question this morning. Have you seen this light? The light of Jesus the Christ, do you know him? Not do you know about him? Not somehow do you, you always done this church thing and so you just kind of grew up in it but there comes a point when each of us has to say yes to Jesus and we have to say Lord I recognize I acknowledge your light your brightness and I say yes and maybe Jesus has broken out in your life this morning and maybe he will this coming week but you know that you know that God is drawing you and if you haven't come to this place you will come to this place where he says I am drawing you into relationship with myself will you say yes will you be like the shepherds and go and see and say you know what I'm gonna seek this out will you be like the wise men it sets on a journey that says you know what a savior has been born for me I must go I must see I must worship will you be like Simeon that recognizes the light and says you know what my savior has been born Are you ready to come and see and meet him? And maybe you have been drawn to Jesus this morning, and that's why you're here. There's a lot of other things you could be doing this morning. But you've been drawn by Jesus because you are appreciative of what he has done in your life. There's an honor that's appropriate, and you've made that step. And you're ready to acknowledge, and you have acknowledged that Jesus is your savior and your king. As believers, are we willing, are we ready to shine forth as one shining with the great light of Jesus? It's an awesome task. It's an awesome responsibility. It encompasses our entire life to shine forth as the burning ones, those that God has placed his spirit within, not to contain, but to give out. 
Let's stand together. I want the worship team to come. I felt like to respond this morning. I simply want to give us a visual. I want us to give us a visual of we are shining. We are those that God has called to shine forth. I want you to bow your heads. If you know this morning that you're not walking with Jesus and you realize perhaps you have in the, in, in the past but because decisions, life, opportunity, whatever you've drifted and you know this morning that the Lord is drawing you back His light is shining on the dark places and you simply want to say Lord Jesus I come to you, I come back to you, whatever is the right words, whatever is appropriate. I simply want in your heart to do that right now. I say, Lord, it's between you and the Lord. You don't need to come forward this morning. Just simply say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Or Lord Jesus, I come back to you. Forgive my sin. I acknowledge you, Lord, as my Savior. I proclaim today, Lord, that you are my Lord, my Master. Holy Spirit, come. And if you prayed that prayer, just begin to thank the Lord. Thank Him for His forgiveness. Thank Him for His freedom. Thank Him for His life. And you should have been given a candle. If you didn't get a candle, there's some in the back, there's some ushers back there. Just raise your hand if you need one. I want us to give us a visual of shining forth in the light. As we do this, I want us to sing Silent Night. And then after that, I'm going to have a prayer. And then we're going to go out with praise. Silent Night. Right. 